in building your sub cake is finding a speaker cone to use. Um, there are two ways to do this. You can either buy just a speaker cone online, they're pretty cheap actually, or you can take apart an amp like this Fender Rumble 15 and use a speaker cone from that. Um, the speaker size you want to go for is between 6 and 8 inches because that will give you the best frequencies and therefore the best sound. So to take apart an amp like this, a relatively simple amp, you first want to go to the back. And right here is the back cover. There are about six screws holding it on. Once you get those off, you can pretty easily take off the back cover. Once you do that, you'll see that the speaker cone is in here and the amp head itself is up here. Um, you're going to want to disconnect the two wires that are connecting the amp to the speaker cone. Um, and once you do that, it's pretty much free from the back. So you can replace the back cover and turn around to the front. In the front, you'll see that there's a grate or something like it protecting the speaker cone. You're going to want to take off the four uh, screws that hold it on. Underneath that, you'll see the speaker cone itself is held on by four screws in this case. You're going to want to take those off. Once those screws are out, the speaker cone will just pop out like this and you'll have your speaker cone for your sub kit. The other main component of your sub kit is an XLR cable or microphone cable. What you want to do with this is actually cut off the end that you would usually put into the microphone. And you actually don't need this piece. The next step is to take a wire stripper and strip the black rubber off about the last one to two inches of the end you just cut. Once you've done that, you should see that there's two main cables inside. In this case, a yellow one and a red one. The next thing you want to do is strip about an inch or so of rubber off of both the yellow and red wire. When you do this, you should reveal some copper wire on the inside. This copper wire is where you're going to end up connecting to the speaker cone. Once those wires are stripped, you're going to want to connect them to the same two ports that the original amp wires were connected to. For this, it's best to use a soldering iron, however, if you don't have one, as long as the wires are in contact with the metal from the speaker cone, you should be fine. Now there is a right and wrong way to do this. If you get the wires backwards, your sub kick won't work. However, if that happens, you can just pull off the solder and switch the wires and do it again. This is what your sub kick should look like when you've soldered the two wires to the connectors of the speaker cone. Once you've got those wires attached, all that's left to do is to test it and then find a way to mount it in front of your bass drum. Right now I'm going to test my sub kick. As you can see, when you lightly tap it, you can hear a sound coming through the speakers, as well as a signal on the mixing board. If those things happen, you know that your sub kick is working. There are multiple different ways to go about mounting your sub kick. Some people use microphone stands, um, but whatever you have and whatever will work um, should be fine. What I did was basically build a wooden stand and then attach a little metal rod off the top. And since the back of the speaker cone is a magnet, it basically holds itself up. This setup works for me, but whatever works for you and your bass drum is the best solution.